Summer is underway in Southern California. When the marine layer gives way to the midday sun, young great white sharks can often be found catching the sun's warm rays. Like clockwork, these young sharks arrive every year. They come here to find food, seek shelter, and to learn to be sharks. While Southern California has gained the reputation of being a hot spot for juvenile white sharks, it is also a marine highway for some of the largest sharks in the ocean. This year in particular, I've made it a mission to find these giants. And find them, I've done. It turns out, Southern California has many very large sharks, many of which make appearances in shallow water on occasion. This is a large white shark, and it's doing something I've not seen often. Notice how shallow the water is here. While I have seen subadult and adult great white sharks travel through shallow areas before, I've never seen a shark this size in both shallow water and over kelp at the same time. Whatever this shark is doing, it provided me with some of the most intriguing footage I've captured this summer. As the dorsal fin beautifully cuts through the water, I couldn't help but wonder why a shark like this would venture into such a place. Experience has taught me that, much like any other animal on the planet, they likely come for one of two things, to find a mate or to find food. At this location, my money is on the ladder. Regardless of reason, much like everything else with this species, I just needed to be patient, to uncover clues. Here was the first one. This is a full-grown male California sea lion, and it's attacking a bat ray. This isn't your typical small ray. It's a full-size bat ray, and the sea lion is seemingly torturing it. With each bite, the ray is injured. This attack continues for several minutes. As it continued, I knew this commotion may draw other predators. From high above, I'm proven right. You can see a white shark has gained interest in the nearby commotion. But how close would it investigate? This is the same kelp bed the shark was in just hours prior. The only difference now is the high tide. Is this why these sharks are going into the kelp beds? The shark continues to get closer, but it changes course. Perhaps it didn't like that path. It continues, possibly probing its most advantageous entry point. It is clearly sensing the sea lion, and once again, it turns toward the commotion. Here, I actually thought the shark would make an attempt. But just as fast as I could finish that thought, the shark just gives up and changes direction once again. A lucky break for the sea lion, perhaps? The sea lion continues its feast, eventually consuming the whole bat ray. On this day, I got yet another clue, thanks to the same sea lion. It is likely sub-adult and adult white sharks keep coming to this place because they are offered plentiful opportunities to attack unsuspecting sea lions. As this fully fed sea lion heads back, Watch as another subadult white shark approaches. This is a smaller shark, but it is still large. For reference, the sea lion in this is in the vicinity of six feet long, which explains a tentative approach by the shark. 
the resting sea lion could have easily been prey. It's no doubt had the larger shark from earlier been here, things may have turned out differently. Another lucky moment for the sea lion. Once it notices the shark, it goes into its normal defensive strategy, not allowing the shark to get behind it. Watch how the dance goes. Eventually, both disappear to the depths below. It's going to take more observation, but it does look more and more likely that white sharks in Southern California do venture into kelp beds more often than thought. After all, it's a perfect environment to capture unsuspecting sea lions. In the past, I've filmed countless hours of sharks with other species, such as birds and dolphins and even close calls with other sharks. These are the exciting things. They are what makes observing sharks fun. But unfortunately, sharks also share their home with countless threats that are not of the natural kind. This is a mylar balloon. Every week, I see mylar balloons on the water, and every week, sharks are nearby, as are dolphins, whales, and countless other marine species. Mylar balloons are among the worst pollution on the sea. This is a reminder that in most cases, they end up in the ocean. Part of my observations is simply to observe the sharks. Spend enough time doing it and you realize that this is the reality that exists. Here's a shark with significant injuries to its dorsal fin. This is likely a boat strike. The gashes on the fin are evident. Notice the yellow acoustic tag on this shark. That is a tag that uses acoustic signals to estimate the shark's location, as well as gather data about their conditions when it comes within range of a receiver. This one belongs to the Shark Lab at California State University, Long Beach. Observations alone can't provide information about the shark's recovery process or location, but the tag will help with not only location, but tracking the shark's recovery. Here is a real-time acoustic buoy when a shark goes near it, it provides real-time data to scientists. This information not only helps track the sharks, but it also provides various data points to help us learn about their environment and their movements. Most importantly, buoys like this provide valuable data that help scientists understand the coastal environment beyond sharks. Due to the lack of funding, these types of receivers will likely be removed later this year from many Southern California locations. If you want to learn more about this program, visit the California State University Long Beach Shark Labs website in the links below.